everyone. I'm Bethany Lozada. Thank you so much for joining me today in my podcast, Overcomers, where we talk about how to overcome life's difficulties with a friend, Faith, and a cup of tea. Today, I have my son, Lucas, as we wrap up our summer series with talking about how to overcome going back to school. But first, we have our tea, which is another fruit flavor. Let's see if you can figure out what it is, Lucas. It smells like a cherry or raspberry. Well, we've already had cherry before. Let's see. I think it tastes like a fruit pie. Tastes most like raspberry. I don't know. It is a blueberry flavor. Oh, blueberry. I think it tastes pretty good. It tastes pretty decent. Yeah. And it's pretty sweet, too. Well, let's start talking about going back to school. I know a lot of kids have started throughout this week and more will go back to school next week, like yourself. And it's a time of fresh beginnings and new starts and new challenges as well. And it's a time where we as parents can come alongside our children to encourage you and also a time where we can teach you how to Set goals for yourself. So during this podcast, I want to talk about how we as parents can teach our kids how to set goals. And we decided that we are going to break it up into five different categories. And we're going to focus on how to set those small goals because it's in the small goals that we can expand into those larger ones that they're going to create for themselves some days. So we're going to talk about organizational goals, time management goals, how to create balance, relational, and spiritual goals. And we came up with a lot of ideas for yourself um, to talk about with your child. And then we created a chart that you can print off and go through with your child and write down one goal with your child under each category. So you do not need to come up with two, three, or five goals under each category, just one. And remember, you want the goals to be attainable and achievable for your child. So we're going to start off with organizational and give you some ideas to talk about with your child under that area to come up with one for them. So, Lucas, what are some organizational ideas that we came up with that you might be able to use with your child? I know one of the ideas that we came up with was using a planner for writing down your homework and assignments and tests. I know I used it for the first couple of weeks of school, but then I started not using it. And then I realized how much of a help it was. It helps you organize everything. It helps you plan out your tests. So, sometimes if I didn't have it or didn't write in it, I forgot when the homework assignment was due or when a test was. So this year, that's definitely going to be a goal for me. And I'm definitely going to try to use my planner more. Another one is turning your work in on time. The planner definitely helps with that. But it's also very important to uh, organize your things and especially organizing your binder so it's not messy. Maybe it's using tabs so you can flip the stuff quickly like graded tests or graded homework. So your binder's not all a mess. Mm -hmm. Also, not keeping loose papers in your binder. Then you can't find it when you need to refer back to it. And, you know, that's an important organizational skill as well. Also, scheduling time for big projects and tests for studying. I know for you, when we've had big, big projects, we always schedule time in the weekends prior to that of when we're going to work on it. So it's not last minute. So when we need to make changes or go out and buy more supplies, we have the time to make those adjustments. So scheduling that in ahead of time has been a huge thing to help. Also, learning to double check your work and whether that's homework or tests, always making sure to go back and learning to have that be part of your normal routine of double checking your work, knowing your due dates. That's important too. Always knowing when your homework, big projects or tests, knowing when things are due, having that written down. 
and then creating your ideal space for studying. I know for your sister, she likes being on her desk, having her writing supplies and pens, markers, everything she needs right in her space and having her soft music playing while she's studying. Having that space to help you be the most productive possible can help as well. Those are just some ideas that we came up with that um, have helped my kids uh, be more successful um, in being organized for schoolwork. But for you, it might be something else or this might help get your wheels turning in your mind. But just think of something with your child that will be a good goal for them to come up with to be more organized this year. Um, that would be attainable for them. Lucas, what is your goal this year for organization? My goal this year for organization is uh, using my planner more often because, like I said, I don't use it too much. So this year I'm going to plan on doing it more. also helps me not cram so that mm. I'm not studying the night before for a test. That helps. I know I had a fifth grade teacher who always said prior preparation prevents poor performance. So if I study or do a project maybe a few weeks before it's due – or study um, throughout the week, that can help me a lot so I'm not cramming, and then I will have a poor performance. There we go. So our next section that we want you to come up with the goal with your child is under time management. That is a very important skill. We as adults know that as well and oftentimes struggle with this area so it's important to start instilling whether you have a child in elementary middle or high school work on this and come up with a goal some ideas we came up with to get your wheels turning some of them lucas some of them is studying when you're more active and more proactive for me it would probably be at nighttime because i like to stay up late and i'm not really a morning person but maybe if you are a morning person you wake up earlier so you can study and finish your homework so that you can um, be more active and study better. Yeah, be more productive, right? And nighttime doesn't mean like late at night, yes. but in the, the evening, evening hours. Yeah. So, you know, we have our morning people that are more productive, wake up early. I know growing up, my brother was like that. He wake up at 5 a.m. and do his homework and studying. I was more evening hours, and so I do better and more productive in the evening. Some people right after school in the afternoon. Pick your time you're more productive and use that time to get your work done. Or also some people, especially when they're younger, they know they can be productive or your child is productive for 30 minutes at a time. So give them 30 minutes to do their work and then take a break to play for 15 minutes. Come back and do 30 more minutes and take breaks. So know when and how long your child can be productive and then use that time wisely. Also, another thing is estimating how much uh, homework that you have. Maybe if mm. you know they have 30 minutes of math, roughly, or about an hour of English homework, then you can set out a certain amount of time to do that, maybe before you have an extracurricular or another event in the evening. So mm -hmm. that can really help you and help you get things done very efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being able to organize your day by how much homework you have. So if you can estimate the amount of homework and know your activities, you know when to schedule each thing. And then with that is also prioritizing your time and events, right? Like tests mm -hmm. take priority maybe over certain other things. There's certain homework needs to be accomplished before other studying of quizzes that are a couple days later. So prioritizing your time and activities. Maybe if you have an essay, then you write your essay before you do your reading homework because uh, mm -hmm. reading probably not take you that long, but the essay will be a lot more difficult. I think, too, learning to have a cutoff time at night. Maybe like, okay, if you have an older kid, lights out at 10 p.m. or a younger kid, maybe it's 9 p.m. And then maybe they need to wake up a little earlier to finish work. That might be a good time management goal to have. Um, these are just some ideas. Maybe it makes you think of some other ideas that you have for a goal with your child. But think of a good time management goal to come up with your child for them this year. Lucas, what is your time management goal for this year? My time, oh, sorry. My time management goal is to uh, study when I'm more effective. So, well, I can probably study later in the evening 
And also, I have soccer at the evening, so I can set out a certain amount of time where I want to do my homework between school and soccer and be more productive with that. Right. But then we said, we already talked about his goal. We're going to finish before soccer, right? Because otherwise it's too late at night. Mm -hmm. So that's one of our time management goals that we've decided. Okay, our next area is balance. What does that exactly mean? We're a go, go, go culture full of activity, but we also need to have balance in our lives. We as adults aren't always the best example of this, but let's start teaching our children what balance should look like and start living that ourselves and setting those goals. So what are some goals that we can think of to start teaching our kids? Lucas, what are some ideas we came with? Balance? I know, uh, sleep, getting the correct amount of sleep. So that's like eight to 10 hours of sleep, especially if you're growing and you're in middle school and high school. It's very important for you because if you get this required amount of sleep, then you can feel refreshed in the morning and not all groggy and that you can pay attention better in your morning classes and earlier classes. And you just feel a lot better throughout the whole day. And I think that really helps. And I probably need to work on that. Yeah. So sleep also with uh, nutrition, packing a nutritious meal at lunch. Maybe that's something your child doesn't like to do and that's something they could work on or maybe they don't like to eat fruits and vegetables. So a goal could be to eat a fruit and vegetable every day. Maybe it's with being active and exercise. So maybe it's doing an activity or exercising several times a week somehow outside. Or maybe it's with extracurriculars. Maybe your child doesn't like to do any extracurricular or a hobby and they need to learn how to de-stress some way or get more social by doing an extracurricular. Or maybe your child says yes to everything and is doing five different activities and it's unsustainable and you need to talk with your child about saying no to a few things and only choosing a couple. So it depends where your child is and what balance you need to create for them. And then we have learning to create some downtime or free play. Everybody needs that time to just de-stress and um, decompress. Whether they're young or old, we all need to learn to have a little space for decompression and building that into our schedules. So create that goal for balance with your child. Lucas, what is your goal for balance this year? My goal for balance is getting the correct amount of sleep that I need. Like I Mm -hmm. said, my soccer goes pretty late. And uh, I used to stay up, read a book, maybe have a little more snacks. And that would make me go to sleep late and I wouldn't feel that good in the morning. So this year I'm going to try to go to sleep pretty quickly after soccer so I can Mm -hmm. feel refreshed in the mornings. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, our next category is relational. So we want to challenge you to create a goal with your child having to do with the relationships at school, those friendships that they're building. This is such an important time in your child's life where they're building relationships, learning what friendships should look like and what kind of friend they should be and want to be. So what are some things that they can work on, some goals that they can set, Lucas? One goal that they can set is to be friendly to everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you see somebody sitting alone at lunch, maybe include them into your friend group, be friendly towards everybody and uh, also forgiving people. I know that can be a struggle for lots of us uh, if we hold grudges very easily. Mm-hmm. We need to be forgiven, take a correction, and that we also need to forgive others correctly. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's having lunch with a different group of friends once a week. Or maybe a goal is to make a new friend this year. Or to learn to speak words to build others up and not tear them down. Or when you have your feelings hurt by somebody, to approach them and talk it out. Learn to be a person to use their words wisely and well and to bring healing and hope. So we want to encourage our kids to learn how to use their words well. So create a goal with your child about their friendships. And then I want to encourage you to go one step beyond that after you do that. And then talk with your child and ask them, What word would you like your friend group or classmates to use to describe you this year? Like what is one attribute you would want your friends to use to describe you? So Lucas, what is an attribute you would want your classmates and friends to use to describe you this year? 
I would like them to describe me as approachable. So if they have an issue or a problem, I want them to know that they can come to me and be able to trust me and give them wise advice about their problem or their issue. Maybe it's they need help with homework or there's something uh, they're having a struggle at home. But I want them to come to me and trust me. Okay. So I hear you saying you want to be approachable because you want them to see you as being trustworthy and able to give wise advice. Yes. Okay, so when you have this conversation, ask your child this. You might need to give them five, ten minutes or a day to think about it, and that's fine. Let them get back to you. But this gives you a little window into their heart to see what's going on in their heart. Who do they want to be? And it gives you an opportunity, a coachable moment to come alongside of them, encourage them in that, and to know how you can be praying for them, how you can be encouraging them this year in that pursuit of the person that they want to be. So I encourage encourage you to ask that question and follow up with them and encourage them throughout the year in that. And Lucas, what is your goal um, in friendship? My year? goal is to forgive easily because I know sometimes I can hold grudges and I need to forgive easily. And if I uh, have um, correction, I need to take the correction correctly mm -hmm. and try to correct. Okay, great. So that brings us to our last area of goal making for the school year, and that's going to be um, spiritual. So let's talk about some ideas that we've come up with that you can choose to create a goal for spiritual growth this year. Lucas, what are some of those? Some of the goals are maybe if there's a small group or a youth group that you can go on during the week, that's a good thing to get involved in. I know last year I didn't go to a youth group very much on Wednesday nights. But now I feel like I really need to go there because it helps me grow spiritually. And that's probably going to be my goal for this year, to keep going there faithfully and because it helps me learn a lot. Okay. Also, maybe it's a Sunday school on Sundays. Another goal might be making sure that you're reading God's Word every day. Maybe it's memorizing a Bible verse once a week or starting a prayer journal where you're journaling prayers every day. Maybe it's um, just reaching out to friends, asking how you can be praying for them or listening to worship music in the mornings when you're getting ready or being prayerful about daily asking God how he wants to reveal the purposes that he has for you in your life. There's so many different things that you can be intentional of how you want to be growing this year spiritually. Think about it, ponder it, pray about it, and come up with your own, with your child, their own personal um, goal for their spiritual growth this year. And then once they come up with that goal, challenge them and see a Bible verse that they want to make their own for this year and be prayerful over of how they want to grow. Maybe it's something they want to learn about, a blessing from God, something they want to grow and stretch in and have a Bible verse that you can be praying with them throughout this year over their lives. So I asked Lucas to be thinking about that. And what Bible verse did you come up with for this year, Lucas? I chose the Bible verse Joshua 1, 9. It says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This verse tells me that no matter what I'm going through or what stress I'm going through, God will always be with me. He'll protect me and he'll help me and make me strong and courageous. Okay. So no matter what eighth grade brings, whatever trials, whatever <laughs> difficulties you're going to face, you want to lean in to be strong and courageous. Those are the two like characteristics that you want to hold on to from God, right? So that's how we as parents can be praying for you and that God would show himself through you, all right? So as parents, that's how we can also come alongside and be prayerful and intentional with our kids to know their hearts better, to come alongside and help them in their spiritual growth. So... I hope that this is encouraging to you and also challenging and a tool to help you connect with your child more and, and come alongside of them, see them setting goals and knowing how you can encourage them in their walk and in their life 
um, through whatever they're going to face throughout this year. Please check on these tools that I have have for you. Print them out and spend just those few minutes with your child to connect with them. Um, and we just want to end in a prayer for you over this school year that God would just bless you and grow your relationships with your child and um, just bless this next coming year. Lucas, would you pray for us? Yes. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for that thing you in us, God. Thank you so much for letting us um, get together and come back to school, God. And I just pray that this school year would be very good and that we would be organized and get our assignments done on time and that we would reach these spiritual goals and try to become close to you this year, Lord. I just pray that we would find a balance in our lives and get to... Um, everything that we need from you, Lord. And I just pray that you would make us strong and courageous and be uh, with us everywhere that we go. To your name we pray, you will be done. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Overcomers with a cup of tea. <laughs>